This video lecture addresses water sampling methods and water sampling design. One does not just go out and take water samples. A monitoring program requires a sample design, a well thought out scientific method of determining where to sample and for what parameters. The quality of data collected is important for many reasons. Time can be wasted and field and laboratory costs can be expensive. Others may use the data. For example, environmental managers may use the data in decision making or a regulatory agency may use the data in rulemaking or in a court case. In some cases, response or remedial actions may depend on field data, so data need to be accurate. A good water sampling design can tell you a great deal about the watershed surrounding your stream, river, wetland, lake, reservoir, or coastal system. If you are investigating a problem area, sample a minimum of three times, that is, once above the suspected problem, at the site, and downstream of it. There are also several sampling precautions to keep in mind. Make sure that sampling will not contaminate the water being sampled. Design a sampling protocol that ensures the most representative sample. Do not take shortcuts that can negatively affect accuracy of sample results. Make sure the sampling protocol is a widely used and accepted method. Make sure all samplers are trained properly. There are several important components to make a good water quality sampling design, such as equipment, training, and processing. A typical equipment checklist will include lists for all sampling project components, such as field measurement equipment, specialized sampling equipment, field gear such as waders and bug suits, materials needed for sample storage, preservation, and shipping, data sheets, chain of custody documents, and transportation. For example, if you were sampling from a boat, you would include an equipment list for life vests, an integrated sampler, an anchor, a global positioning system, GPS unit, navigation charts, and oars, among other equipment. When collecting field measurements, special care is needed to ensure the accuracy of the field equipment. For example, when using a pH meter to collect pH, or other meters for temperature, conductivity, or dissolved oxygen measures, make sure the probes are calibrated. Specifically for dissolved oxygen, calibrate the meter the day of sampling using barometric pressure. And for membrane probes, change membranes monthly. Some newer or more expensive dissolved oxygen probes are optical and will not have a membrane to change monthly. For pH and conductivity, check the meter at least monthly for verification and make any changes to membranes, batteries, or recalibrations as needed. Make a habit of checking the condition of probes and the battery levels. Turbidity is collected in the field through various methods such as a turbidimeter, secchi disc, or transparency tube, and water samples can also be shipped to a laboratory to test for turbidity. Turbidimeters measure refracted light. For representativeness of the actual sample water, rinse the vial three times with sample water prior to collecting sample. Then rinse with distilled water after analysis to remove contamination from the vial. To ensure accuracy, the outside of the vial should be clean and free of anything that may refract light, such as smudges, scratches, lint, water, or fingerprints. Use Kim wipes, which are non-lint laboratory cloths, to clean or dry the sample vial before placing it in the turbidimeter. A secchi disc is used for deep open waters like those found in lakes, reservoirs, or coastal waters whereas the transparency tube is like a mini secchi disc built to sample shallow waters like streams and rivers. For both field measurements, make the reading with the observer's back to the sun so their shadow adequately allows reading. The idea with the secchi disc is to lower the disc until you can no longer see the black-white pattern and record that depth. Then add some slack to the line and slowly pull in the rope. Record the depth that the secchi disc becomes visible. In marine waters, a standard 12 inch or 30 centimeter disc diameter disc is used compared to a standard 8 inch or 20 centimeter diameter disc in fresh waters. Essentially, the secchi disc measures the extinction coefficient 
giving us a feel for the depth that light penetrates into the water column. In more turbid waters, this depth will be shallower. Measuring flow requires good methods in order to ensure more accurate readings. The more sections of a river or stream you sample for flow, the greater accuracy in your results. Where you measure does make a difference. If you are not using a handheld meter to measure flow, you can use a float if you have a section of the river or stream at least 50 feet in length. As a general rule, a sample should be taken at 6 tenths of the total depth down from the surface. In the example here, the deepest point is 3 feet deep, and the sample is taken at 1.8 feet down from the surface. When collecting samples with a sampling device, be sure to adequately prepare the sample containers. Rinse the sampler with distilled water to limit cross-contamination. Rinse the sampler three times with sample water to ensure a representative sample. In some cases, you may be able to reach the sample without an extended sampling device, in which case the dip sampler will be collected directly with collection bottle. This sample method has the lowest chance of contamination if done correctly. Enter downstream of where the sample is to be collected, walk upstream to the sampling site, and sample upstream of where you are standing. Collecting quality assurance samples is a critical part of sampling design. Most sampling protocols call for quality assurance, quality control, or QAQC samples, and these should always be budgeted into a project. There are two important steps in a QAQC project design, that is, duplicates and blanks. A duplicate sample is essentially taking a field sample twice. The duplicate is identical to the field sample, and it is treated in the same way as far as bottle preparation, collection, sample preservation, and handling. Collect a duplicate every tenth sample and keep track in a sample log so you are sure to collect the duplicate on time. The idea behind a duplicate sample is to ensure consistency in results. A blank sample is a sample of distilled or deionized water that is collected using the sampling equipment. You use the actual field equipment, like a dip or meter, and compare the results. You are testing your cleaning, handling, and calibration techniques to ensure samples with zero values are reported as such and there is no contamination in the sampling design and equipment. Blanks and duplicates should be preserved and shipped just as all other project samples. Storage and shipment of samples to laboratory facilities is another important step. Coolers come in a variety of sizes depending on the samples being collected. Be sure to pack securely, include ice packs, and try to avoid wet ice. If ice packs are not available, all wet ice should be double bagged and all paperwork should be placed in a Ziploc style bag to avoid wetting the paperwork. Include chain of custody paperwork identifying projects and the sample as well as who should receive the delivery. Most labs offer standard forms for use. Deliver the cooler directly to the lab or use an overnight delivery service, especially if requesting any time-sensitive analyses. A point that was overlooked here is sample preservation. Many samples simply require ice, but in some cases other preser preservatives may be used. For example, an acid may be used to fix a nutrient sample, or a fixative like M3 may be used to kill a diatom sample. Above, we have focused on grab samples, but continuous monitoring devices are also used. These devices are placed in the field and record continuous readings of desired water quality parameters. Site selection and placement is key, and selecting equipment that is low maintenance is important when practical. Data, data validation and processing are required. Wagner, Bulger, Oblinger, and Smith, 2006 of the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, offer guidance on standard operating procedures, or SOPs, in the report 
USGS guidelines and standard procedures for continuous water quality monitors, station operation, record computation, and data reporting. Many volunteer-driven water sampling programs exist throughout the U.S., and these programs offer hands-on training for volunteers so that samples are co collected consistently and according to SOPs. Be sure to check out the web resources available through the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, listed here. The U.S. EPA offers a fact sheet on volunteer programs, a directory for monitoring programs to help you locate one where you live, a national volunteer monitor newsletter, volunteer methods manuals, and more. The following sources were consulted in developing this video lecture on water sampling methods and design.